All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's time for Student of the Gun Radio. We've got so much to talk about, and we haven't since, well, since we were here together last, last week, um, the inevitable, we knew it was going to happen. We just didn't know when, and we thought we had more time, and isn't that how it always is? Isn't that how it always is? We think we have more time, but we don't because you don't know you don't know how much time you have you don't know how much time your loved ones have you don't know when the last time is going to be that you see your best friend so make the most of it make the most of it got a lot to talk about today duracoat brownells crossbreed holsters all the features and then we have an interview for you guys that has never been it's been a uh, a staple for the grad program for a number of years Uh, but uh, if you are a relatively new listener or and i'm in by the last couple of years this is going to be new to you Uh, we have uh, one of our interviews that we did with uh, my good friend uh, james yeager and you can listen to his words and they're going to echo through eternity but uh, before we do all that i'm going to give zach the opportunity to play the wonderful introduction music Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, proudly brought to you from the SDS Import Studio. If you want quality that's affordable, visit sdsimports.com. We don't just talk guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics, because guns are politics. Now sit back and listen louder to your co-host, CEO of Full 30, Jared Markle, and your beloved host, the pimp hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed. It is I, and very soon, Jared will be sitting right next to me, if you're watching this. If you're not watching it, well, that's okay. You can just listen to. You can just listen to. If you are on the Discord, uh, and you would like to ask a question or make a relevant comment, make a relevant comment, then you can do that. You can do that uh, by well, just typing it in, and Jared and Zach will pay attention to the comments. And if we feel that it's something that the world can benefit from, then maybe uh, maybe you will be privileged to have your comment read on air. Ooh, look at you being all smart and cool like that. All right, let's go ahead and get it started. Duracoat Finish Firearm of the Week. ba 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 All right, I got a confession to make. I got another confession to make. I'm no fool. You like that? That was there that was go. my Foo Fighters. Uh, That's pretty good. My Foo Fighters. So right here in my hot little hand, whoop! Can you see that? I don't know if you can see it or not, but if you can see it, it says "Baby Poop Yellow." Yes, I got a Baby Poop Yellow can right here, and then to go with that, I have a Bush Green can. Why would you want baby poop? Yellow baby poop yellow and, and bush, bush green. green. That's because it's the the original, the OG Bush War Rhodesian African Bush War colors. That's right. I planned. I was hoping to this weekend do a uh, well, actually break into those and uh, do a project. But I'm going to confess something to you guys. This is my confession. It was so ridiculous ridiculously stupid hot here uh it had to have been in the garage it was in the triple digits for sure yeah it was like 105 in the garage and i was like i could stand here uh dripping sweat doing this or i could not and i opted to not <laughs> yeah why, why would you're you, a wimp man if you wait two weeks you'll have great weather that's right you're a wimp Uh, but there was actually there's a part two to that i'm gonna do the the armed project the armed i'm gonna do that gun in this but the truth of the matter is when you buy these there's so much uh color one yeah yeah and you have between when you crack the seal you have seven days to use it or lose it once once you crack the seal on these you got i i've never waited seven days the longest i've ever done was two uh 
But the point is this. You you want to have your project ready to go. Oh, uh, and I've got to come up with another gun or another something. Because the ARMED, uh, the ARMED project... Uh, by the way, Zach's going to release that that article for you guys uh, very so- soon, aren't you, Zach? Yes, indeed, I am. Yeah, is that going to be the the featured article for the Liberty Letter on Friday? You are correct. Oh, okay, cool. So that's going to be the featured article for the Liberty Letter on Friday. And if, if you, you guys are not getting the Liberty Letter, that's right. If you don't get the Liberty Letter, you go to studentofthegun dot com. There's a thing that says seven training tips that could save your life. Get that free course, and we will also deliver the Liberty Letter to you every single Friday morning at what time, Zach? Uh, around 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Mountain Time. So if you're east on the east coast, that's 11 a.m. If you're on the west coast, that's 8 a.m. There you go. There you go. So, uh, yeah, but what we asked you guys to do, uh, the, the guys, the folk at Duracoat, I asked them to do this for me. I asked them to whip me up a can of baby poop yellow and a can of bush green to go together. This is a package. This is a bush war package. Uh, but it, it's probably, I know, let's say it's probably not on their website yet. I know it's not on the website yet. But if you would be willing to purchase this, not if you think it's a good idea, not if you would, I would wear one of those shirts if you bought it for me. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> if you would be interested in purchasing the baby poop yellow and bush green so that you can do a a modernized version of the traditional bush war camouflage pattern then send them an electronic mail send an electronic mail to them and uh i believe there's an electronic mail address uh in there on their website uh, contact us well there you go if you click contact us send us a note if you'd like to send them a note do you have thoughts would you like to share feedback do you have questions comments or concerns yes we'd like to hear from you so you put your first name your last name your email and in the message you say what do you say bush war yes or baby poop yellow yes baby or poop i yellow. would buy it yes so there you go there you go you can do that paul markle that's me and i'm gonna put i'm gonna i'm gonna put my money where my mouth is i'm gonna practice that of which i preach talk to the people while i practice that of which i preach did you tell them the history of the baby poop yellow and the bush bush green is that what's called did i tell them as in the audience or did i tell duraco Uh, well both but the audience that's listening right now what is the significance of baby poop yellow and bush green oh well the significance is back during the the rhodesian bush war when they first purchased uh they were purchasing the the what we they called the r1 which was a licensed copy of the fn fal rifle Now, I did this little uh, thing called Real Men Wear Shorts where I explained all of that. But uh, the the original FNFAL rifle was a big black rifle, right? Makes sense. Was it scary, too? It was scary. It was big and black and scary. It was a BBR. It was a big black rifle. So, uh, and initially, during the Bush War, they, they issued them, and they took them out into the field and it was fine but somebody at some point in time i'm not sure who it was whether it was a regimental commander or a sergeant major or something somebody said you know what we're doing we're camouflaging the kids right we're making them wear camouflage clothing we came up with this super cool uh rhodesian brush stroke camo pattern but they're out in the in the bush carrying these giant black rifles i know why don't we make the rifles match with the camouflage clothes that they're wearing and someone said what you crazy and he's like no i'm not crazy like you crazy no i'm not crazy so the sergeant major they they, it came down from the top they're like make the guys make the troops camouflage their guns like, well, how are we going to do this? See, this is back in the, the 60s and 70s, all right? This, they, they didn't go to, to Walmart and buy Krylon. <laughs> this, is, this is before Steve Lauer came up with the idea for Duracoat. 
You're like, he didn't have that idea in 69? No, no. Uh, so what do they do? What did they have? They had paint. Now, where do you get paint? If you're in the infantry, generally you don't have lockers full of paint, right? Who has the paint? The motor pool, the motor T, because what are they painting? They're painting vehicles, right? So what happened was they would, you know, a platoon at a time or a squad at a time or whatever, they would send the troops. They're like, go to the motor pool, see Sergeant Smith, uh, or and uh, Sergeant Smith will give you the paint and the brushes. And so when the, when the, I mean, I was in the infantry, okay? I know how this stuff works. So they, they marched over there, you know, the squad leader marched him over to the motor pool and Sergeant Smith was waiting and he was standing there and he probably had an unfiltered camel hanging out of the corner of his mouth. Uh, and he's all grizzled. Imagine the, the guy from Baba Black Sheep. Baba Black yeah. Sheep. Anyway. No wool for you. Black, black, black Sheep Squadron. from the, the, But he's like, all right maggots or whatever he called them there's paint there's brushes don't get paint all over the place and uh paint your guns and he left and so the all the privates and pfcs are like rock on so one of them went over and he he switched on the transistor radio that was hanging on a peg because transistor radios used to have handles on them jared so you could carry them and they had antennas and he switched to the uh, the the uh, the station that was coming out of uh, I don't know Pretoria or whatever. <laughs> oh, and uh, they they were listening to the Rolling Stones and the Doors and Creedence Clearwater Revival and and uh, uh, and while they did that, they sat there and they told stories about the 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 chicks that they were dating back at home, and they took paintbrushes. And they dipped into the, they had two colors. They had a yellow color, which affectionately became known as baby poop yellow, because that's what it looks like. It looks like baby poop yellow. Not canary yellow, not performance yellow, not high-vis yellow. No, 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 no. If, if, none, if you're out there in the audience, if anybody out there is like single and never had a baby, um, that's... That's the color that comes out of the baby. <laughs> it's that color. So they had that color, and then they had the bush green color, right? The jungle green, the bush green, and they had two colors. And uh, and the, the 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 most interesting thing to me, Jared, I actually have some surplus Rhodesian uh, R1 magazines that I picked up, is how there was no definite specific pattern that wasn't like okay here's the template you have to do it exactly like this in the marine corps that's the way it would have been if they did this in the marine corps it would have been it has to be exactly like this do not deviate Mm -hmm. but back then they're like just make it green and yellow and so what did they do they got creative sometimes some of them did like leopard spots with the yellow uh some of them did big wide stripes some did narrower stripes or whatever and if you can find an example of the original if you can find an original r1 they're worth a lot of money first of all they're they were select fire guns so you can't get them in the united states anyway but if you can get i think some of them chopped up came in minus the the happy switches uh, I know Larry Vickers has one. Now uh, we have one that's was built for us to the specifics uh, of the 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 Rhodesian specifics. So if you would like, if you think, man, that is a cool idea, I would love to do that. I I you're like, ooh ooh ooh, Mister Cotter, ooh ooh ooh, me, ooh 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 ooh. Then go to the guys at dirt go to duracoat firearm finishes and it says contact us and it's and it says comments and in the comment section say i want to buy baby poop yellow and bush green from you people i want to buy it not i think it's a good idea not if someone bought it and gave it to me i would use it because we played that game before with the pink t-shirts women we don't need to tell that story. 
Yeah. I'm going to tell that story anyway. You women stink. Because <laughs> for years, women are like, you should do a pink I, shirt. I know smell really nice. Do, you should do a pink shirt, a pink suit and a gun shirt. Do one. So we did them. We spent the money. We printed them up in a bunch of different sizes. And we sold like five. And all the rest of the women are like, well, if you give me one, I'll wear it. Okay. You should have told us that before we went through the whole. Yeah, like, before I wouldn't have and, spent the money to source them and print them and, yeah. So none of this. If you're serious, great. Uh, then do it. So that is that's that, Mister. That's that. Oh, and the other thing that I ordered from Duracoat, and you want to do this is uh, you need True Strip, also known as cinnamon, uh, because when you do a project, especially if it's a gun you've had for a while and it's got. Hoppy's number nine all over it or rem oil or you name it. Uh, you do not want to coat on top of any kind of petroleum or oil or grease or whatever. You Wait gotta get all that crap off there. What you're saying is that cinnamon is abrasive enough to strip the oils off of your gun? That's our favorite stripper, cinnamon. Do oh. I look like a stripper to you? Yeah, but in a good way. <laughs> Those of you that haven't seen Bad Grandpa. Yeah, you just don't know. Yeah, but in a good way. I just want to make sure that I'm gonna people call don't you. think that we're actually saying use cinnamon. <laughs> because no. we are in the public and that might I, happen. Oh, so. I, no. uh, if you don't get our jokes, listen louder. Yeah. Spend more time here. Listen louder. Like, But those are insider jokes and I don't like those. Well, I don't know. You, Everything's you, available on the internet. So that's right. Go back and listen to 1,152 right. episodes. Yeah, that's right. And you will catch all of the humor. You will be an insider at that point in time. Well, and they also have this thing called a uh, no sand. And if you don't, if you have a uh, a sandblast box, you know, if you have access to one of those, that's the best way to prep your parts is to put them in the sandblast box and you put the funky gloves on. You your gun parts. Yeah, your gun parts. Not your body parts. That's your personal parts. Um that's the best way, but not everybody has access to that. And one of the things that Duracoat has been really good about doing, that one of their goals is we they wanted their products to be useful and available to everybody. So if you just have a, a garage and a workshop, um, you say, I don't have a air compressor and I don't have airbrushes and I don't have a spray, you know, a, a sandbox, <laughs> a sandbox. Uh, I don't have a, a sanding, you know, what is it officially called? It's not called a sandbox. It's called a, maybe it is called a sandbox. Uh, what are you talking about? For uh, shh, uh, sandblast box, sandblasting. Oh, I don't know. I'm not a sandblaster. Do it yourself sandblasting box, sandblast box. You know where you can get those? Sandbox would be intelligent. Uh, you can get those at uh, harborfreight.com for $229. Of course, it doesn't come with the air compressor, but still, still. You probably get an air compressor at Harbor Freight if you wanted to. So there you go. It's your abrasive blast cabinet. That's blast what, cabinet. It's a blast cabinet. So you say I don't have a blast cabinet. That's cool. The guys at uh, at Duracoat have this product. It's called No Sand, and it's what you can use to prep your parts, your your gun parts, to get all the funk off of them. Because you you want to you, you can't have any grease, no oil, no nothing. Because uh, if you put, if, well, if you coat on top of that, it's not going to stick. There you go. All right. So there you go. That is your lesson for today. Do, 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 do. Uh, go to the, follow the, the hyperlink in the show notes. Go to studentofthegun.com slash Duracoat and uh, be nice and be polite. And maybe if you're nice and polite, then you'll get something good out of it. There you go. SDS Imports, the uh, makers of the Telkarov shotguns and the T size 1911s and uh, all that good stuff. They do have a 10 millimeter now that they are promoting the T size 10. It's, is it called the X? Is it, is it the X? Because X is 10. 10 is X. Roman numeral 10. I saw there was an X on the slide. Is X going to give it to you? Keep going. There you go. The D10. There we are. There you go. X going to give it to you. They're going to give it to you. The TSS uh, 1911 D10. D10. Pistol. Semi-automatic 10 millimeter pistol. It's only, it's MSRP to what, 700 something? Uh, 799 dollars uh, It's right. available in 10 millimeter auto 5-inch hammer forged barrel. 
forged full size length slide with front and rear cocking serrations. It does look pretty slick. Mm. Like the grips on this. It's side. pretty cool. Yeah. It's got micrometer adjustable sights. This uh, the de- the design of this thing, the colors just speak to me. That's yeah, that's nice. So if you want to be the first kid on the block to have a ten mic mic in your group, there you go. Oh man, what is going on over at high dash point dot com? High dash point dot com. Labor nope, Day sale. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. High dash point firearms dot com. Yes. High dash point firearms dot com. Over at high dash point slash. firearms dot com. <laughs> <laughs> they've got 10 millimeter carbines you know you could get a 10 millimeter carbine and a 10 millimeter pistol for less than 1500 bucks no yep yeah for us in 12 actually uh you get i would say probably right around yeah right around 12 for you can get two then you gotta then you gotta feed them that's the only trick is feeding them but the good news is uh, ammunition manufacturers, whereas 10 years ago, they'd kind of forgotten about the 10 mil cartridge. Now they're back again. Now, speaking of the 10 mil cartridge. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Shady's back. back. Uh, folks, I, I feel obliged to to mention this. I don't know if I mentioned it last. Did I mention it last week about how with with no fanfare... With, with no, you know, they, they just just been doing it. Where whereas Colt and Smith and Wesson and a lot of the companies, they came out with ten mils and then they discontinued them. And then they reintroduce them and then they discontinue them and they you know they they go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, the reason now you guys who are too young to remember this, I I remember back in the late eighties when Colt released the Delta Elite. It had the cool red triangle on the grip, and it was a 1911 chambered in 10 millimeter. And, of course, Delta, what they were inferring. Now, they didn't say that this is the official gun of the the American Delta Force, but that was the inference, you know, because the term Delta Force in the late 80s was hot. It was hot. hot. Uh, There's a reason they discontinued them. Because they broke. No, no they didn't. No. Um, yeah, they did. Uh, that's the 10 millimeter is a high pressure cartridge. And well, a lot of companies introduced 10 millimeter handguns and a lot of companies discontinued the 10 millimeter handguns because they broke. Yeah. Um, there's a company that's been making a 10 millimeter handgun for decades and never discontinued it and they're just they just quietly keep knocking them out and it's glock the glock 20 has i don't know how old it is 20 25 20 millimeter glock yeah the 20 millimeter glock Um, it's a big one glock the glock 20 uh it's been out for geez i don't know how they're on it's a gen 4 right now but uh the 20 has been out for at least 25 years maybe 30 i'm not sure how many you know uh, I've reviewed them. I reviewed a 20, and then they have a compact version called the, is it the 30 or the 30? I can't remember the compact version. doesn't matter. Uh, just to give to give the devil his due, the fact is, is the Glock, and I, I was talking to a guy years ago, um, and I, I have a, a 10 millimeter pistol uh, that's not a Glock. It's, it's something else. And, oh, it's the 29. Yeah, I, I've tested the, tw- and they have a 40 too. Uh, the G40 is a 10 millimeter. It's a long slide 10 millimeter. But uh, I went to a uh, training school and I brought a 10 millimeter pistol with me from a different company. And I was talking to uh, the, the guy who ran the school. And he said, What do you got there? And I said, uh, This. And he said, He goes, That's good. He goes, It'll break eventually. And I was like, Oh. He said, Yeah. He said, they all break. He goes, well, they all, he goes, except Glock. He said, but those are fat and people don't like them because they look ugly. He said, but they don't break. <laughs> it's like, uh, so uh, I don't, I'm, I'm curious to see if firearms manufacturers, see back in the 90s, the 80s and 90s, they were making these guns and they were breaking. And so I'm wondering are, have, did, they, did they learn their lessons? Did the companies, did these companies learn their lessons 
Uh, and is it going to be a different story this time around? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. But I do know this. High Point makes a carbine in 10 millimeter, and it's less than 500 bucks. So if you want to dip your toe into the 10 millimeter game, Juxi, J-U-X-X-I dot com is where you can go, where you should go uh, to follow Student of the Gun. Sign up or follow, you know, basically follow our Subscribe. channel. Yes. We have the uh, Real Men Wear Shorts series that I actually just plopped into a a playlist, a course for you guys. So you can go directly to the link in the show notes. It'll take you to the Real Men Wear Shorts series. You can watch the entire series there. Please subscribe to the Student of the Gun channel on Jukesy.com. That's right. Uh, it's it's a course. And the reason we did this. It's a course, of course. Um, is is uh, I... I grew up knowing and understanding what the Rhodesian Bush War was all about, how it was actually a fight against communists, uh, that the Rhodesians weren't all a bunch of, like, clan hood racists. And uh, the Rhodesians got screwed over by the, well, by most of Europe and specifically the United Kingdom. But can I say this out loud? Fornicate the UK. And I'm proud of myself for for censoring myself but that they got screwed over and the communists took over the country and they ruined it like they do everything they did that in south africa oh south africans are mean and racist and they're the same thing as the clan and nah, 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 nah. and uh, just last year the south africans were literally fighting each other over food remember that jared the cops were like shooting rioters who were stealing food and looting uh, grocery stores and food warehouses. You know where you get that? You get that with communism. Yep, that's oh. where you get that. That's what communism gets you. Uh, it gets you like fighting over. Uh, there's there's a couple of videos missing in this, or or do I have yeah, to click the more right. tab? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're but anyway, so go to, oh, there we go. Yeah. Go to juxxi.com, follow Student of the Gun. And uh, the reason I did the whole Real Men Wear Short series is because a lot of, well, young people have no idea. They have no idea. Uh, and, and I thought, well. That Real Men Wear Shorts? Yeah, the Real Men Wear Shorts. And that they oh, actually, I had somebody people early on they're like there's no way the people don't fight wars and shorts and everyone it's like you need to shut your that hole under your nose and listen louder and understand that actually they did actually they did and they weren't the first ones uh the africa corps uh, in uh, in north africa issued shorts to their soldiers and both the brits and the germans were wearing shorts in the desert Shorts in the desert? That's crazy. Why would you do that? I don't know. So your men don't overheat and die? <laughs> is that a good, is that a thing we're, we're trying to do? We're trying to keep our men from overheating and dying? Yes. I remember our buddy that was talking about how he essentially man-made capris out of his uniform and he was laughed at. And yeah. And a couple of weeks later, everybody was wearing them. He's like, huh. That, I, is that a, that what? sign? What? That uh, in this house we believe. What are you talking about? Can you not see what's right on the screen? Yes, in front of you? Uh, but I don't know what you're asking. Is that a real sign? I have no clue. Oh, we need that. No, so let's move. I'm not putting a sign in my front yard. No, but I, I'll have one of those. I'll put it on a T-shirt and wear it everywhere. All right, um, that is that, Mister. That's that. Get your butt over to juxxi juxi dot com. Follow Student of the Gun. That is your marching orders, and I'm going to give you marching orders. All right, it is time for me to be quiet and uh, you to listen up. Uh, well, open up both those uh, holes on the side of your head. Close the hole under your nose and listen louder. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Thank you. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it's time for Brownells Bullet Points, and that is brought to you by, well, our good friends at Brownells. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Now is the time. Is the time now? Would you say the time is now? Yes. The time is now to get your fanny over to brownos.com and get PMAGs. If you don't have 10 PMAGs, did you just say 10? I'm not crazy like you. Okay, whatever. Do whatever you want. Live your life however you want to live it. But is it safe to say, Jared, that the advice that I have given over the years has been sound advice? Um, Yes. Do you recall February of 2020 when I said ammunition is at an all-time low? And I said, don't mortgage your house. Don't go into debt. But if you go to your ammo locker, look, decide if you need some, and if you do, buy it. And within two months of me saying that, ammunition had doubled in price. Do you guys remember when they were asking a dollar a shot for nine millimeter? I do. How dare you take part in insider trading? Oh, I know. I know. How dare you? Right now, PMAGs, Gen 3, the good ones, the ones that the Marine Corps is using, the Gen M3 at Brownells, 11 bucks, 11.99. And you're like, well, what's the difference? Uh, there are just slight improvements between the the two and and the three. Uh, do yourself a favor, buy the one that ones that the Marine Corps bought. For the, the fact that the Marine Corps stopped buying aluminum, aluminum magazines and bought exclusively P mags, do you know how like earth shakingly monumental that is? Because the Marine Corps is run by stubborn stubborn human beings is that why the marine corps produces stubborn human beings yeah the 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 fact that that the idea that they would buy quote a plastic magazine oh, i'll never buy a plastic magazine like okay whatever um if the marine if anyone is going to break things that they're issued it's the marine corps uh, you could issue you know you could issue them bowling balls and and uh Broken or pregnant. Yeah, in 30 days, it'll all be either broken or pregnant. Uh, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, if if you don't have 10 solid uh, PMAGs uh, for your rifle, you're like, why are you recommending this? Well, the truth is, you know, if you buy a handgun today, like if you buy a Canik, if you buy a Glock, if you buy whatever, generally it's going to come with two. Most of the time, the good ones will come with three magazines, right? Mm. That's not the case with rifles. Rifles... They always come with one, you know, and depending That's on stingy. Yeah. And depending on where you buy it, sometimes they're even so, well, I'm not going to disparage companies who send their rifles off with 10 round magazines, but sometimes they do that. So if you're going to have a fighting rifle, if you're going to have a martial rifle, you got to have my minimum is six good mags. Isn't that a standard loadout? Yeah. Six good mags. Uh, the standard loadout is generally three plus one. That's 120 rounds. If if you go through, like James said, he goes, if you go if you go through 120 rounds, you're either going to be the biggest hero or the biggest villain ever. Yeah. Because either way, you're going to be famous. Uh, Sad that that's the way it works. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, think about it. Like if you apply the the uh, the special forces detachment delta. Um, the the standard for special forces detachment delta is three rounds per target. You should uh, there you should use. You mean they no, do the Mozambique? Well, they you should use no more, preferably one or two, but no more than three per target, right? So you say, all if you right, can't do it with three, then you can't. You might as well not even do it. Well, if you shoot somebody three times with a five five six, you'll probably get their attention. Uh, but think about it. If you're carrying three plus one, that's 120 rounds and divide that by three, you're like, uh, that's 40. So you could, uh, a set prac- from a practical standpoint, you could engage 40 targets effectively with that load. Evil suckers. 
I would hope that you would never have to uh, engage 40 targets. I'm just saying. You're like, yeah, but that. But what if you have to use suppressive fire? Did I say saw? Did I say squad automatic weapon? No, I didn't say squad automatic weapon. Now, if you want to, if you want to do a party starter, one of my favorite things from Magpul is the forty. Probably one of the best inventions that Magpul has come out with in the last twenty years. They've had a lot of good ones, um, and they don't sponsor us. They really should. You guys should just sponsor us, <laughs> but they're like, whatever. We're, we're selling so many plastic magazines. We don't need to sponsor your dumb ass. Um, but the, the 40 rounder now, the 40 rounder is you, you can't get into a low prone with a 40 rounder, right? But if you need a party starter and 40 rounders don't fit in normal pouches, they stick out. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, if I was going to do a party starter, I would go ahead and throw the 40 rounder into the gun and then put stack 30s on my 30s chest. In the chest. And it's not going to hurt anything. Like, if you don't use all I don't those. Know, man, that weighs a lot. You don't get penalized for having. It's like, yeah, but what if I finish the gunfight and I still have rounds left over? Oh, that's a, it's a 10 point penalty for having rounds left over. It's like people act and behave as if like there's a penalty for having rounds left in your gun. Well, if you have rounds left in your gun when the fight ends, that's a that's a ten point penalty right there. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you don't get penalized for still having rounds <laughs> in your gun when the fight ends. It's like I don't those know. were designed for to be weapons of war. <laughs> And weapons of war have no place on our streets. Oh, that's why all the police officers have them. Huh? Maybe we well, should. What you know? What what the president said stands. Okay. Yeah, what the president said stands. But what he said was mm, da, fifty hundred million billion. Remember, did did you see the, that speech? That was over in. That wasn't that the like South African something. He's he's like, well, we're gonna spend. Uh, uh, hundred thousand million billion. That's why you don't do somewhere math between live speech. Did you did you see the his 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 spokes retard came out and said, uh, since the president he's created ten thousand million jobs. Hmm. Is that your final answer? Ten thousand million. Wouldn't that be ten billion. Ten ten billion. He's created. How did exactly did he create 10 billion jobs? Don't worry about it. One okay. Half for each person. <laughs> we'll never run out of jobs. Uh, so <laughs> there's so there's more jobs in America than humans? No, no, what he meant was he was cloning the Jobs family. <laughs> so we've got Tommy Jobs. We've created who's in our crowd. 10,000 million. Yeah. So there's more jobs than there are people? That's weird. But to get back on point, this is what I'm going to tell you. If you have a martial rifle, a rifle that is designed for martial application, A, you need training. B, you need magazines. C, you need ammunition. Now, you can't get the training from Brownells, but you can get the ammunition and the magazines from Brownells. So get your butt over there and do that. You know where you can get the training from. This little crazy place called Student of the Gun. Student of Gun University, SOTGU. SOTGU. By the way, there's a big shakeup coming. If you guys are big not aware of that, you can go to SOTGU.com and it says right there, so it means it's true. It says the shakeup is coming. Student of the Gun University is changing the way that students of the martial lifestyle learn. If you're interested, you can sign up for notifications. You click the button that says get notified, enter your full name, email, and mobile phone number. And we will notify you when this thing launches. But if you don't want to do that, there's still something for you on this page. We have the Student of the Gun University podcast posted there for you. So you can listen to all of them. Uh, wow. There's quite a few on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten podcasts on there now. Yep. Wow. So and this Thursday interesting episode. story. If you go to SOTGU.com, I'm gonna this is gonna be for you guys who are listening right now. If you go there, there's a background photograph that we used, and that's the one we call the Dragon's Breath photo. That is yours truly firing a Barrett eighty two uh M eighty two A one CQ. 
the short barrel version in complete darkness and uh wasn't th that done at our uh yep so this is the conundrum i had i had that gun and i had a super helion light to attach to it uh, a crazy light that you could spotlight people at 500 yards away and i needed to do a what how do you shoot a barrett in the dark with a light review which meant i needed to shoot a 50 cal now if you know anything about public ranges most public ranges are like nope no 50s in the daytime in the daytime and then you and if you can in the daytime you go to the public range you're like here's what i need to do i need to be here at about 10 11 o'clock at night and i need to shoot this and they're like you do what now you're a lunatic crazy person so i'd only known james yeager for maybe a year maybe not even a year yet and i called him and i said this is what i need to do i said i've got a 50 bmg that i need to be able to shoot in complete darkness he said throw your crap in your car you know your truck whatever he goes and come down he goes and do it here and i said okay and i did and uh, that was actually my first time and i also took i also jumped in he goes we got a fighting rifle this week he goes tell you what come on down bring all your crap uh, jump into the fighting rifle class yeah you can take it with your barrett and then at <laughs> no, <laughs> and then at night i had ammo but not that much yeah. ammo. and then at night you can go ahead and i had a professional photographer and uh for those of you in the photography business that was a uh a, a uh, uh basically he just hit the shutter opened it and said fire and i fired and all of the light for the image was created by the flash of the 50 bmg going off but that was a uh, tactical response and i can't i can't, i don't need today i don't know any other range where i could go to and say i want to shoot a 50 in the dark at night i know one yeah that tactical response potentially could well another yeah in addition to on so, the west coast so if you go to student of the gun university or sotgu.com even if you're if you're just curious you're like what is this photo and the cool thing is that photo was a two-page spread in the magazine oh yeah nice. yeah that's a classic one all right moving on let's go ahead and uh well let me be quiet and let zach do the talking shop sotg.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed you do, and ShopSOTG.com has a lot of good fun stuff going on right now. For example, uh, if you've gotten in on the uh, pr the uh, Marshall application of the rifle pre-order, those books are on their way, and you will have your final edition of the trilogy in your hands very soon. Ooh, the trilogy. Yeah, the, the trilogy. The Marshall application trilogy. That I feel I feel like uh, Tolkien over here. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there another one? Isn't there a fourth Marshall? Application no, of there's it? only three Marshalls oh, right now. Nice. Yep. Yep. Maybe there will be a Hobbit trilogy in the future, but uh, <laughs> and in addition to that, over at ShopSOTG.com, it's, well, the martial application pictures are over at ShopSOTG, pictures, uh, video, books, Which martial is application it? books are available right now at ShopSOTG.com, and something that will be available very, very soon on ShopSOTG.com are the brand new Made in America uh, student of the gun icon PVC patches. Yes, indeed. Look how pretty they are. They're so lovely. They well, will be you can you soon. can look if you're if you're watching us live. If you're not, just close your eyes and imagine. <laughs> yeah, good point. If, if you're watching the imagine video version, how awesome it is. Yes. If you're watching the video version, then there yes, you, you can see the brand new, all, almost ready to be sold into your little hands uh sotg icon patches so that's the first one 
Yep. That, First that one. is numero uno. This was the sample. I passed it to you guys. You said it looks good. I like it. I was like, okay, it looks good. I like it. And now hopefully you guys in the Discord, hopefully you like it as well. Oh, I like that. There yeah. you go. So you're going to be sporting. You're going to be sporting. Slap it on your whatever the hell you want that has Velcro on it. So, I'm going to need to make sure that I have one of those set aside for myself, please, Zach. Oh, please. don't you worry. We'll, we'll have plenty the, of them. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're yeah, before we we did that with the, what was it you had to give yours up? Yeah, it was some kind of patch. It was the Buddha patches. Oh yeah, I don't even have patches. one of those. We, we the original Buddha patches. We 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 forgot to to. <laughs> we were so young. Uh, we were so young and naive. We yeah. forgot to set. We we like had a hundred and we put a hundred up on the store and all we sold all hundred and then yep. Jared had to take his personal patch off his hat and, and send it to one of you guys. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy that you say that and we have a made in America uh patch maker. Anyway, moving on. So yeah, we'll be those will be available. Oh on wait, SOTG these are made in America? Yeah. Yeah, these are oh, made in America. Nice. Yeah. These are American. So yeah, that's right. Moving on. Moving on. Pretend you never heard that. Uh but yeah, SOTG icon patch is coming soon. Christmas. Uh, they will be available uh, relatively soon. The SOTG icon patches are coming in Christmas? No. No, these are coming probably at the end of this month. Okay. Yeah. So Mixed signals. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, don't confuse people. Don't confuse people. But it's fun. Uh, no. No, 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 it's not. Okay, All right. So show. time. It is time for us to have a student of the gun homeroom, which is brought to you by our good friends at CrossbreedHolsters.com. Do 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 do. Yes, indeed. Crossbreedholsters.com is the sponsor of the Student of the Gun Homeroom. And if you go to crossbreedholsters.com or follow the link in the show notes, use the promotional code S O T G. It's hard to remember. If you do that, you're going to save money. You're going to get a high quality product and you're going to save money at the same time and you can be armed and dangerous on demand, which is what you really should do. All right. We had two incidences here. What happens when you're not dangerous on demand? Well, then evil people can just kill you at will. We got a story here from Detroit, uh, the city of my birth. But it's been a long time since I was born in Detroit. Oh, he's smiling. Oh, is, is he smiling? Oh, bless his little monstrous heart. Fox 2 News. Now, Jared um, is going to read this. But um, what I found here, Jared, it's, it's, if you look at this, Detroit teen charged with random shooting spree that killed three. That's horrible. But there is a good news story here that they actually kind of bury towards the the bottom. Okay, so this was published on August 31st, 2020. Easy for me to say. Yes. This is uh, the Wayne County prosecutor has filed multiple felony charges against a 19-year-old man from Detroit for the random shooting of four people that killed three. Prosecutor Kim Worthy announced charges against Dante Smith, 19, with several felonies, including murder, assault, and animal cruelty for the random shootings last week. Make sure they throw the animal cruelty one in there. Yeah, it's just a, an extra one. Yes. According to police, Smith killed three people in the shooting spree that started around 4.30 a.m. on Sunday. Three people were ultimately killed, and a fourth was injured after being shot in the area of Wyoming, near seven mile in the early hours of august 28th this wyoming michigan yeah well, i mean wyoming street not to be in detroit not wyoming not wyoming the state, state where this guy wouldn't have probably made it five feet police chief james white said on monday that the suspect may have been dealing with a mental illness you think well judging by the the act that he committed he was definitely mentally ill Charges were filed on Wednesday against Smith, and he was arraigned later in the day on Wednesday. Undoubtedly, there's no question in my mind, had we got this guy that night, he would have gone on to hurt more people. Had, so we, had not, we not got yeah. this guy that night, he would have gone on to hurt more people. That was Detroit Police Captain Michael McGinnis. And 
Mr. McGinnis continued to say, had he not access, had he not had access to that firearm, regardless of what he was going to going through, he uh, had he not had access to that firearm, we wouldn't have be having this conversation. Okay, pump the brakes, Michael McGinnis. It's really hard for me to read. What? What? First of all, wow, that's just kind of crazy. Um, you remember the 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 former chief who's now retired from Detroit who told the Detroiters, yeah, hey. We cannot be everywhere to protect you. You need to get guns, and you need to get training, and you need to protect yourselves. Uh, someone might need to remind Captain Michael McGinnis that black tar heroin and crack cocaine, wh- which store in, in Michigan do you go to get black tar heroin and crack cocaine? Which Is there a store? Is there yeah, an it's outlet? Black tar cocaine. Yeah. Um, BTC for short. Crack cocaine not is not available in stores, and yet it's a plague in Detroit. And how did that happen? Because evil people, because bad people are going to get what they want, drugs, guns, whatever. Uh, heck, if you're, you're a Mexican drug cartel, the U.S. federal government will hand them to you. But I digress. So before you go on your anti-gun rant here, Detroit Police Captain Michael McGinnis, you might want to pump the brakes. It's not the gun's fault. And bad people will always get weapons. No, they won't be able to get weapons because it won't be legal. Yeah, that's worked really well with crack cocaine, hasn't it, Captain Michael McGinnis? It's also worked really well in Canada. Yeah, it worked great in Canada, but that's the next story. Yep. But here's what I wanted to get to, because it's kind of buried. So it has the names of the victims. He killed a woman, another woman, and another woman. Then go to the John Pallack one. The lone survivor. The lone survivor of the shooting spree was 76-year-old John Pallack. Just 15 minutes after Briscoe was killed, which was one of the other guys, police were called to the home on Pennington near Seven Mile to report of shots fired. This is my old neighborhood. You know, I used to live at six and crash it. Yeah. Palick and uh, he had been out walking his dog when he was shot in the leg and his dog was shot in the foot or the paw. Yeah, the paw. This is where the charge of animal cruelty comes in. Palick and his dog survived the shooting. A neighbor of Palick's told Fox 2 that they heard the shooting and started shooting back. I looked out the window and I could see the suspect shooting down the street. And then I heard four or five shots and my neighbor crying for help. So he grabbed his gun. And this is so that was the end of the quote. Yeah. And then it picks says, uh, so he grabbed his gun, ran to the front door and started shooting at the suspect. And then the good, good Samaritan said, quote, I called out to the shooter to let him know my presence. And I said, why are you shooting? End quote. All while the suspect was still armed. Other neighbors sprang into action to help Palak as the suspect ran off. The neighbors put a tourniquet on the wound and called police. Thank you. Thank you. So what do we have here? The one person that did survive, see what he did, what he killed, first victim, Shanae Lee, was found shot multiple times. So he shot this person with a handgun, apparently. She went down, and then he kept shooting. That's what he did. This He shot this gentleman walking his dog. Shane. It's Shane. Yeah, he was found dead in the doorway of a Detroit church. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was Shanae. Shane. Shane. Um, that's I've never encountered. No, that's a new one for that's, me. That's, an, yeah. that's a new one for me. But um, the reason that the lone survivor lived is two, twofold. Number one, a good guy with a gun stopped the bad guy from just standing over this guy and shooting him in the head. Number two, he was shot. But a neighbor ran over and put a, (gasps) well, they had to amputate his leg, right? No, the doctors actually didn't let him in the hospital because. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because they didn't put the time on it. So the doctors wouldn't let him in the hospital. They, They put a tourniquet on his leg and saved his life. But you have to read like better than halfway down into the story to see that. Shouldn't that be like, hey, Detroit, 
The one guy that survived survived because a good person had a gun. <gasps> yeah, but that's a positive story, and people consume negative news. We don't want we don't want to do that. Many times better and more fa and faster than positive news. A man survived because a citizen, not an EMT, put a tourniquet on his leg and stopped him from bleeding to death. <gasps> We don't want to tell people that. To be fair, the neighbor could have been a paramedic, and we just don't know. Yeah, the neighbor could have been a paramedic. He could have been two medics. You need to let that go? Nothing? Silence. Could have been a pair Do of medics. Do not acknowledge his jokes. Don't acknowledge the dad joke. All right. <laughs> that, that's pretty good, though. I so might, I might steal that that's one. Detroit, where horrible things happened, and... The first thing a cap you guys need to get rid of that captain because he's he's an anti-gun zealot and well if he wouldn't have had access to a gun oh thanks nostradamus because well we know that if he wouldn't have had access to a gun no one would have gotten hurt because you can't hurt humans without guns or can you let's go to canada for a second blame canada blame canada it's a boot respect. It's a boot dignity. It's a boot respect. It's a boot being a bunch of socialists. One suspect found dead, one still on the run after 10 killed in Canada stabbings. Quote, no one in this town is ever going to sleep again. End quote. That's going to that, that's gonna suck for them. Yeah. Canadian authorities. Whoa, hold on a second. Let's get the dateline and stuff for you guys. It was updated on September 5th, 2022. So 16 p.m. Yep. Canadian authorities, is that like Canadian geese? Yep. Oh, no, they're Canada geese. Canada geese, which makes no sense, yeah. but moving on. Canadian authorities said Monday that one of the two suspected uh, men of stabbing... Two death, men suspected of stabbing. people in an indigenous... I need to make this bigger. That's what she said. In an indigenous community. In, in an indigenous community and nearby town in Saskatchewan has been A. found dead, and the other is still being sought. Police had charged both su suspects with murder and other counts as the massive manhunt following one of the nation's deadliest mass killings entered its second day. Now, hold on a second. What, which kind of, which caliber did they use a nine millimeter to blow their lungs out? Or did they use a, uh, an AR 15 whose bullets go five times? Have you seen that? That's the latest thing from the idiot left. You don't understand. The bullets from an AR-15 go come out five times faster than any other gun. That's not even true. That's, That's insane. A blatant lie. That's but oh oh the men are suspected of injuring 19 people in a series of what? So 10 dead and 19 injured in a series of knife attacks Sunday that led to the James Smith Cree Nation to declare a state of emergency and shook residents of the nearby village of Weldon. Wow. One of the suspects, Damian Sanderson, 31, was found dead Monday outside of a house being examined on the James Smith Cree Nation with visible injuries that police said did not appear self-inflicted. Hmm. His exact cause of death will be determined by the Saskatchewan A Coroner's Office. Commanding Officer of the Saskatchewan A RCMP, Rhonda Blackmore, told reporters at a press conference on Monday. His brother, so these dudes were brothers, mm -hmm. Miles Sanderson, 30, remained the focus of an intense search. Police said there is a possibility he is injured, but they did not confirm if Miles was involved in the death of Damien. Uh, okay, so here we go. We got Canada. Uh, up in Canada, the People's Republic of Canada, where they, the, the uh, was it, Fidel Castro's bastard son, is doing everything he can do to disarm the people because that's how you keep people safe is is guns and mean and bad and guns bad where were jared where was the popo while uh johnny and jimmy scumbag were stabbing and slashing and hacking people to death where so, was the popo so 10 victims dead 19 10 dead injured. 19 injured that's a lot of 13 people. crime scenes so they just like went around hacking and slashing and and stabbing and um where was the popo 
Well, what do you mean? Well, what I mean is every single leftist scumbag communist piece of human filth that says you don't need a gun follows it up with, that's why we have the police. So are the survivors uh, going to be able to sue the, the, the province of Saskatchewan and the country of Canada? Yesterday's attacks in Saskatchewan are shocking and heartbreaking, said uh, Fidel Castro's bastard son. This is the kind of violence, any kind of violence that has no place in our country. All right. Wow. Thanks. That'll learn them. Mm -hmm. If you see anything, call 911. The town is never going to sleep again. They're going to be terrified to open their doors, said Weldon resident Ruby Works. That's a cool name, Ruby Works. Um, why are you afraid? Jared, are you afraid to open your door? No. Why? Because if, if there's a lunatic standing on your porch, what happens to that person? Um, they are, will no longer be a lunatic. They will become room temperature. Well, you, you can't just you can't just shoot knife wielding lunatics. That's not how we solve problems. It's called deadly force. Actually, and I am guaranteed. Well, first of all, you can't take my right to self defense away, but it's guaranteed. No one has that authority, and uh, so I'm guaranteed to have that right to self defense. I can definitely stop that dude from stabbing me. That's my right. Family. Uh, it, and they, they go, in 2014, 29 people were slashed and stabbed to death at a train station in China's southwest city of Kun, Kunming. Kunming? Or Kunming. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. In 2016, a mass stabbing took place in uh, Sagahira, Sagamihara, Japan left 19 people dead. But doesn't Japan have, like, the strictest gun laws on planet Earth? Well, yeah, that's why people had to be stabbed to death. It's almost as if, almost, that socialists are the slowest learners on planet Earth. Or, Jared, is it that they know that their plan is to disarm good people and that bad people are just going to kill the disarmed good people, but they don't care? That could be. That could be that uh, that the Canadian government and the Japanese government and the Chinese government love high death tolls. It could be that the American government loves high death tolls because that gives them the excuse to usurp more power from the people. Could be. Oh, man. All right. I think it's time. Is it time? Yeah. All right, so that's your lesson. That is your student of the gun homeroom crossbreed holsters lesson. Be dangerous on demand. If you uh, if you don't live in one of these socialist hell holes, uh, and I'm assuming most of you don't, uh, be armed. Be dangerous on demand. And that way, you won't have to be afraid to leave your house uh, because you'll be able to deal with monsters when you encounter them. There's a gentleman who spent his entire adult life trying to prepare good people to slay he tried to prepare the righteous to slay the evil i'm just gonna go ahead and say it and and he said it you know why jared you know one of the reasons why we thought we had more interviews with james hmm. because we did an entire television segment for student of the gun tv with james oh. remember mm -hmm. we actually did two yeah um, we did two television segments. Well, we could pull those. And James said, he said, I'm here to teach good people to kill bad people. And it's as simple as that. No, it's more complicated than, no, it's not more complicated than that. There are evil people in the world. And evil people, some of them are in government, but evil people will always do evil things. And disarming the righteous there's nothing to stop the evil but socialists don't care about that it enables the evil it enables them why do you think these guys in canada knew that they were going to be able to go on a slashing stabbing spree 13 crime scenes because they knew everyone victims. they encountered was going to be disarmed and 19 injured 
Because in Canada, you're not allowed. You're disarmed. Because we can't just have people carrying guns. That's the job of the police. Where were the police when all these people were being stabbed and slashed and cut up? They weren't there. No kidding. No kidding. This Am I correct in saying that this interview is about 50 minutes long, Zach? 56, I believe. 56. Zach is going to drop in the first 25 minutes of this interview. Uh, we're going to put it in today's show. And then tomorrow, during bonus hour number one, we're going to give you the remainder yep. of the interview. So if you want to hear the whole thing, uh, it's super easy. Just go to uh, getsotg.com, sign up for the grad program, which you should have already done anyway. Uh, but now it's even more uh, of a reason for you to do that. Do that. Now, is this a public interview? Is this part of the, um, what do we call that thing? Grad the party. celebrity celebrity, celebrity interview series yeah. yeah is it part of that it's part it of the was, celebrity part of interview that, yes. series okay this is gonna be the first time that you guys in the public say, audience got another one in there have had the opportunity to hear this yes pull it out so and I'll, so, I'll, I'll make sure the first half doesn't have any naughty words in it all right thank you um, you can help support the jaeger family multiple ways oh yes um, they they've uh in the videos they've said multiple times that they really appreciate the the community support that they've had just in sharing the grief because they know it's affected other people as well as them. And so send them messages, let them know that you're thinking about them. And, and if you can do something to help the family, don't ask them to give you a checklist of things to do. Just do something that you think that James would approve of. And that's one thing that um, the consigliere said really well in the video announcement about James but you can support the Jaeger family. We've got uh, we've partnered with Brian from Survival on Pur Purpose, and um, he's done a really good job of uh, organizing items that we could put into a raffle. Now, go buy a raffle ticket. It's a hundred dollars a ticket. And there's right now we're doing the training raffle. There's seven different. I think there's six up there right now, but there will be seven different trainings opportunities up there um, by the end of the day. So by this time, by the time this thing drops in the podcast, there will be seven up there. You've got five days from today, four days from the podcast drop. So go to jaredmarkle.com and secure your raffle ticket there. It's J-A-R-R-A-D-M-A-R-K-E-L.com. Um, there's some more information there. If you need it, you can click the little drop down and there's, I've put in all of the update videos from them. So you can go uh, watch all the update videos and whatnot if you need more information on that. But go there. So this is the one, this one ends on September 11th. And then give us a week or maybe two weeks to put up the next one. And it'll be a whole ton of gear that's going to be there. It's going to be a three-tiered raffle where there's a, a low price, there's a medium price, and a high price. And obviously, the higher the price, the more valuable the thing that you're going to get. So just pay attention to that. Uh, JaredMarkle.com. Go support James and his family. Yeah. And obviously, by this point in time, you know that James left us. Yeah. But... You're, and, and some of you guys are like, well, does this is it still valid? Yes, it's still valid. The whole purpose of this is because James's wish and desire was that Rebecca, his, his lovely wife, um, and his kids would not be burdened with a financial you know, burden. He did not want to be a financial burden uh, on his family. He did not want them to have to dig out of debt because of his treatment. Uh, and obviously, he had to see doctors and specialists and you know, we all know how that goes. So, yes, it is still valid. And it's it's just as valid now as it was two weeks ago. This is this is to make sure, this is to basically to honor his final wishes to help uh, Rebecca and his kids um, so that they don't have to shoulder the burden uh, of, his, of his treatment um, even though he's gone. So, get in there. And this, and I can't think of a better way to honor his memory than to train. Yep. Because that's what he would want you to do. Double down on your training. That's right. Who's an excited little listener? Would that be you? Yes, you're an excited little listener. You should be excited because we've got a treat for you today. And I've been kind of teasing with you, you guys with this over the last couple of weeks or so. But we've got a whole bunch of celebrity interviews lined up. And uh, who else to start off our list of celebrity interviews than 
James Yeager, the MF CEO of Tactical Response and anything else he wants to be the MF CEO of. So James is hanging out on the line. That's where you put your pictures. Is you put them out on the line so people can see them. James, thanks for being with us. Thanks, man. Uh, exchange gram is a wonderful thing. It, it is. You know how people like to take pictures, and then they want to share them with their friends? <laughs> they go on the line. That's right. They go on the line. That takes pictures and immediately puts them online? On the line. On the line. Oh, uh, I think that's that, that, saying that. That, that, <laughs> that, that what was most funny about that was how uncomfortable it made the twenty-something hippies. They're like they're so they're so uncomfortable with the improper speak. They're like, no. he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. You, you, this is track with me. Stay with me here. All right. <laughs> James and I have known each other for six, seven, eight, something, nine years. I don't know. Uh, not quite yeah, well. not quite a decade, but going all the way back to uh, before he was famous and uh, when he was just. I was always. You was always was famous. always somebody. You were always somebody. Uh, it just you folks out in the audience didn't know. <laughs> it took me 10 years to become an overnight success. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and you know what's, what's I find hilarious about that, James, is, is you and I both, we've been like in the trenches doing our thing. You know, the salad, you know, I asked, I said something, was it you? I said salad days and you're like, like when you eat salad. Yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's another thing that, that young people don't get. I said something about the salad days and Jared's like, yeah, we had those. Dude, like, I never heard that term. Before. I said you had those. He goes, yeah. When I worked at Wendy's, we had the salad days. I'm like, no. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, son. That's but not now what I that know. Means. Now he knows. No, but you, you and I, we, you know, been behind the scenes, just doing our things. You know, buying and selling and trading guns. So we could pay the rent and put gas in our cars and and what have you. And yep. and you do what you do now, and people are like, oh. Did you used to do other stuff too? <laughs> it's like yeah, you know, and uh, or somebody's like, well, you, you know, you should you should write, you should write that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I really should. I I should write that stuff. Uh, you know what I, I I discovered to my chagrin, and and I love sharing this with these these new gun writer people is that here's the deal: if you write for gun magazines, the only people that know that you write for gun magazines are your family and your friends. The people, that, the people that read the articles, they don't even know. I had some. All right. Yeah, I had someone say, "Oh man, you should have this article about derp and derp and derp." And I was like, "Yeah, that sounds interesting because I wrote that." Oh, are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I did exactly what you're describing. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't know. I didn't know who wrote it, but I, I, I read it and I looked at the pictures and read the title. It's like the only time they know who wrote it is when they don't like it. Yeah, exactly. When they're when they're writing the letter to the editor about how outraged right. they are, right? You, you remember yeah. that from the the eighties and nineties, like, dear editor of Guns and Ammo magazine, <laughs> Guns and Sandwiches, Guns and Sandwiches. I have been a, a dedicated reader for twenty million years, and until until, until now. now, and I I can't believe that you posted this article by James Yeager, and I will never ever purchase your magazine again, and I will tell all my friends and sycophants not to do that as well. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the ones that start out with, I know you know this, this is the letter that starts with, I. it's almost like a letter to Playboy. I'm 37 years old, and I carry... I never a, thought it would happen to me. I never thought it would happen to me. But I carry a, a Kimson, a Crimber, a Crimber, <laughs> you have a, a Kimber Crimson Carry Elite Model 4 in a Galco Slick Slide number 1 with a da 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 And, like, what kind of shoes were you wearing? That's what I always want to ask him. <sighs> <laughs> well, n n not that, not you know. Speaking speaking of uh, d days gone by, uh, and one, one, you know, an icon in, in the industry since those days. Uh, you guys recently had Ken Hackthorn on your uh, on your show. Oh yeah, Ken and is like it's, it's a, a, a couple of things stand out to me. Number one is that when I bring his name up, most people don't know who he is, which is sad. It really is. It really is sad. And uh, number two, he knows who I am. I was really happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, Ken knows who you are. He That's appreciates you, you taking it. all the heat off everybody else. I, 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 yeah, I, I, <laughs> I referred to him uh, yesterday as a, uh, a tactical Confucius. 
<laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like like uh who do you call the tactical Buddha or what do you call? No, there's a tactical pageant queen, but that, well, well yeah, that's a different story. Different story altogether. <laughs> but uh no, well, Ken's living up on a mountain now, and I told him, I'm like, dude, you're you're up there living on a freaking mountain in Idaho. You're like the you're like the tactical Confucius, you know. Oh yeah. We need to make a pilgrimage to the mountain so that we yep. can gain the wisdom. So that we can also see. That's right, exactly. <laughs> All right, but, we just, uh, you know, it's, it's it, I mean, just one more thing about Ken. It, it, again, a consummate professional, and he did some when I took his pistol class. He did some downrange stuff mm -hmm. and you know and i laughed and i said you know ken i said i don't know why i get so much you know crap for this and you don't and he said oh he says oh no james everybody does this so i said no they don't it's me and you and uh and he said no 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 you know blah 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 we came back the next day called the whole class together and apologized to me and he said james he said i got to thinking and you were right me and you are the only one on the commercial side doing it he said my point of view is Everybody I hang out with on the special operations side, they all do it. It's just common. They just do it. And so in my eyes, it was a common thing. But as you pointed out, it's not on this side of the fence. And uh, and so that kind of legitimized, you know, what I think that he and I are doing in this community is the professionals are doing it. Why can't the civilians do it? Oh, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, you made him. You you kept him up that night thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not everybody does this. You well, and that's the thing is when 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 you get into your realm, your world, and, and we all do it. Doesn't matter whether you're a doctor, a nurse, a lawyer, or whatever. You get into your realm and you hang with your group of peers, and you just assume that other people understand. And I, I know I run into that where I've said something or done something or demonstrated something, and you've done it how many times like you can't count the number of times you've said or demonstrated that and so you just kind of fall into that well everybody gets it right i'm sure right. that everybody gets it by now and then you encounter right. them and they're like i don't understand why you would want to do that and you're like dude i only okay let's talk <laughs> well, well i mean it's like one of these the, the, these things there's this new thing called the temple index um, I've always called it up for the last 19 years I've been teaching it. But it's this new thing called holding your gun up so you don't shoot people you don't want to shoot. And it's this wonderful, amazing technique that, again, I had a stupid name for it. I just called it up. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I gotta, I can get better marketing people. Yeah. Um, but 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 it's but it's in, it's in fad now. So I, I I'm glad to see that the rest of the world is at least starting to come this way i mean I, you know i've had well, this head start and yeah, it's unfair there's there's still people that are they're kicking and screaming i think you you and i both know that they get on their blogs and they kick and scream about how horrible it is and tragic and and you should never do that in the history of the world and yada 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 and well, i experienced a similar thing where i had no idea how fortunate i was in 1986 to come under the tutelage of john farnham Right. And so I took, you know, I went out to, and I did a, an extended training class in Colorado. It was, it was two weeks long, but uh, four of the two day, four days of the two weeks was John Farnham firearms training. We did paintball stuff. We did, and that was when they, they had those old Crossman 50 caliber revolvers. <laughs> right. Which right. were awesome because they worked really, really well. Uh, yeah. And then we, you know, we did, we did like team stuff. Did, did you ever, did you know about the ESI and their driving school part? No, I guess not. Okay, well, they had a driving part, and we actually did, like, ambush, counter-ambush and breaking ambushes where we fired from moving vehicles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you imagine that today? Can you imagine lining a bunch of cars and saying, all right, this is what we're going to do? People would lose their ever-loving minds. Yeah, I know. I do that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, they're like, I can't believe it. You allow people to shoot from a moving car. It's like, well, yeah, we did. And The uh, humanity. The humanity. But, you know, I took that class, and I left there feeling pretty good about myself. And then as I progressed throughout my life, you know, five, six, seven, some ten years later, I'd pick up a magazine. They're like, oh, this is the new hotness. You know, you should do it like this. And I was like, I'm like dude, I did that. 10 years ago in John Farnham's class, and, and you just figured out that that is the new hotness. Uh, Do you know what's sad about that, really, about you taking that class in 1986? And I also have the same 
sense of sympathy for students whose first class is with us, like fighting pistol with us, Mm -hmm. is what do you compare that to? Yeah. Like if you'd taken a bunch of crappy classes and then took our class, then you've, you, you know, you've taken some steps and you've gone to the top. And I know this sounds getting terribly arrogant, but, but what you and I teach is the top. And so, and, and students come to me all the time and they say, where do I go from here? And I'm <laughs> it's just like, you know, good luck. Well, it, down and, <laughs> and, or on a, on a flat plane. And it, well, and the thing is, you know, you get these like a first time student, you, you can give them a survey at the end of the class and you say, what did you think about the class? And they can it does. You know, a guy who's never taken a class and he took one. It doesn't matter whether he says your class is the best one in the world. I mean, it makes you feel good. He says, oh, it's the greatest training in the history of the world. I'm like, well, that's good. But what do you or he could say it's the shittiest training in the history of the world. His opinion really is it doesn't matter because he has nothing to compare it to. That's like giving a, a, a private, you know, in uh, uh, an E1. You're like, hey, take this survey. Tell us what you thought about infantry school. Oh, this is the best infantry school I ever went to. Well, <laughs> compared to what? You don't know anything. And people we had, say, we had a guy just recently in a fighting pistol class, and it was his first commercial firearms class. And he said, there's a lot of downtime in this class. You know, in a class where, as you know, we shoot a thousand rounds in two days. Yeah. He thought there was a lot of downtime. I'm like, brother, you haven't been anywhere else yet. Yeah. <laughs> downtime? <laughs> Dude, I mean, uh, you know, the institutionalized training, military training, that's your life is downtime. Uh, that's, yeah. that's why, well, I don't know any more of these kids with all their electronic gadgets, but that's why... Er- <laughs> You know, every, everybody in, in my unit, we all everybody had cards in their ass packs, so that when you were, you know, when, when you weren't doing what you're, you'd be playing spades or whatever, because that's all there was was waiting. You know. Uh, yep. Well, you and I just came back, or well, we didn't go come back together. You were already kind of up there, but from the NRA annual meeting up in Nashville, yep. Tennessee, and we talked about it from our perspective. But what, what I want you to do is um, kind of give us your perspective of the NRA annual meeting in Nashville this year that just uh, just went down, and you know, give us James Yeager's takeaways. Well, I mean, the first thing I want to do is. Com- compare and contrast a couple of things. Um, SHOT Show and NRA Show. Uh, SHOT Show is for manufacturers to find dealers. It's not set up for the public. And then NRA Show is for manufacturers to interface with the public. And so it's, when you go into a booth at, at SHOT Show and say, hey, what is the specifications on this? The guy goes, how many do you want to buy? When you go into that same booth at SHOT Show, there's different people in the booth. And you say, what are the specifications? Oh, let me tell you about that. I shoot these myself. Da, 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 da. So the only reason everybody wants to go to SHOT Show is simply because you're not allowed to go. It's so they just can like, tell their friends it, on it, Facebook that they're it, shot. It, it, it's very immature. Like I got, I got to know a guy. I got to sneak in. I got to, you know, get a pass and pay a guy off, and you know, whatever. Um, and NRA show is for consumers, and why it's kind of just passed off as not being the place is beyond me. But it is the place. Now, to more specifically answer your question about the, you know, the, the twenty fifteen NRA show in Nashville, I enjoyed it like I do all the other NRA shows. I find that. It's it's a much uh, a much more polite crowd uh, than Shot Show. Um, I don't really li- I didn't really like having it in Nashville, even though that's my backyard. Nashville's just not set up for conventions that size. You know, Vegas does that really well. Um, but uh, but the show itself, I thought, was run very smoothly, uh, and I was very happy with the the show itself and the layout. And it was easy to get around. It was easy to navigate. You know. Uh, you know, um, but overall, I had a very pleasant experience as I, as I do in all the NRA shows. Now, you, were you really scared because there were so many people under that roof with guns? <laughs> <laughs> the funny part is every NRA show, every shot show, there is some group that's going to pick it, right? Mom's Demand Action was there in Nashville. Did you go out and see them? No. There were six of them, <laughs> and, and there were four cars. So I imagine that. This one girl said to the other girl, hey, let's go get coffee, and already had the signs in the back, went through Starbucks, maybe get Panera Bread for a muffin or something, and then and they came on out to the thing and said, oh, while we're here drinking our coffee, hold this sign. Like, I think two of them were probably duped into it. <laughs> um, but, but they're usually there, if it's not raining, they're usually there for an hour to 90 minutes, and then they go home. 
That's the protest. And, they, and, and so every city that does this, like Nashville, they've never had an NRA convention before. Man, they had the riot gear ready, man. They had, they thought it was just going to be <laughs> Clash of the Titans out there, like Braveheart. Rah! And, you know, she's six, it's six soccer moms, the you know, little chubby chicks, and um, sitting out there, you know, going, guns are bad and stuff, guns are bad and stuff. And then they left. <laughs> and they did, did they really even get close to the convention center? Someone told me that they were down at the water. Yeah, like park. a block, block and a half away. Yeah, they didn't want to around. get too close to the barbarians because those people are dangerous. Yeah. Oh, Lord in heaven. I but, have a I have a whole, I'm going to do a YouTube video I'm on some demand action. Um, oh, but, but, well, but, they demand more bedroom action because that's obviously well, not Well, I was going to say that. The action of. they're wanting. They're not getting, so they're yeah. doing something else. They but, gotta, but I got, I got some, I got some YouTube gold on the way. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, well, we, we laid down the gauntlet about a year ago that if if Shannon from the Moms Demand More Bedroom Action, if she's really serious about you know hope and change and stuff, that we would be willing to sit down with her. But first, she had to come to our break room and make a sandwich uh, barefoot. Oh, come on. She hasn't taken us up on it yet, though. But it's still out there. I mean, I'm willing to, to come to the table. She just needs to bring a sandwich to the table, and I'll come to it. <laughs> come on. That's no way to establish a communication. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm waiting. Oh, actually, one of, one of the one of the moms, uh, we, we met a, an NRA woman uh, at, at, or wait, a, yeah, a, a woman who was at the NRA. And uh, after she got back, she she snapped a photo of of uh, mayonnaise and and and, uh, and bread and, and a knife and sent it to us and said, I, "I'm back home doing what I need to be doing." And we're like, <laughs> "Rock on!" <laughs> That's right. Woo! And this is a woman doing this. Uh, oh, I got right. a question for you. Um, being the the misogynist that you are, and you know who uses the word misogynist. Uh, Unix. I call massage therapist. Yeah, this is what you call massage therapist. Unix and lesbians are the only people that use that word. But uh, <laughs> dude, nobody knows who the Unix is. <laughs> Google it. Our audience knows. Uh, it. Google it. So no, we get we get letters from uh, uh, demanding that we be more polite to women and we be more women friendly and so forth. But it's never Jared. Tell it's me. never a woman. It's always from a dude. I'm like, can you go get your purse and put your skinny jeans yeah. on and, and walk away? Yeah. Do you get that? Yep. Do you get like 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 uh, metrosexuals write you and say you need to be more polite to women? Oh, dude, go look at the hot crazy matrix. Uh, video. Look at the comments from all the dudes that are put off by it. But the women, like, I guess admit. they, th- I guess they think their girlfriend or the girl that wants to be their girlfriend is going to read their comment and go, "Oh, he's 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 such an advocate for women's rights. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out with that guy." No. Not, it's, not. I'm not gonna go out with that guy because he's a weak vagina. Well, and you know who oh, yeah. was, who was most offended by the. Uh, all right, let's. You want to talk? Let Let's talk. Let's talk about what happened at Valdosta State University last week. Uh, or well, no, it was more than a week ago, but whatever. Um, where the uh, the the First Amendment supporters decided to throw the flag on the on the on the ground and and stomp on it and uh, and then burn it. And that uh, the chick, the Air Force veteran chick, you know what I'm talking about? Are you familiar with the story? Yeah. yeah. So she goes and she snatches it up. And my question that I had was. Why is one single white female the only person right. standing up? Where where was the where were all the white or any men? I don't care if you're white, purple, orange, black, yellow. Where are the men standing around her saying, "No, no, no, no. We're not we're not going to bully this woman." Where are they? Right. James, where exactly. were they? Yep. Listen, Albert Einstein said it best. Being a warrior means being genuine every moment of your life. And that girl is a warrior. Uh, I'd actually never the hair heard standing that quote up on the before, back of my yeah. neck. I didn't. I was not aware of that quote. That's that's awesome. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how to put it better than that. And, and well, the follow up on that is they're like, oh, that sweet little innocent uh, First Amendment protester. Uh, he was packing, and and now he's got a warrant for his arrest, and they're trying to hunt him down. What? Shock. Why? That's a shock face right there. Can I can I go to Valdosta State and and uh, take a dump on a Koran? Am I allowed to do that? Is that protected no, by the that's First not, Amendment? That's not going to happen. Not, why? Why not? You can tear no, up the no, Bible no. And, and throw it on the ground because it's a symbol of white oppression and racism. No, no, no. The flag is. 
That's well, the, the yeah. flag is a symbol. Well, I mean, yeah, white supremacy and racism. See, I thought this—that's where we've gotten, James. They're they're so far away from the origins. It's like I thought the stars and bars was you know white supremacy and racism. Now it's just the whole entire you know old glory flag. Well, they don't even know where they don't even know the, the history of the American flag about the red and white stripes being the Sons of Liberty flag or the the blue panel being from George Washington's camp camp flag. I mean, they have no, they don't even know the origin of what those symbols that they hate so much even are supposed to mean. Well, well you know, down here in Mississippi, we still have the stars and bars in our state flag, and they've not capitulated <laughs> or taken it. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's just. <laughs> you know, uh, the Tennessee boys like, don't get me started on that. Uh, what you know? What I want to know, James, is uh, yeah. is there not a KA chapter on Valdosta State University? There must not be. We need to research that. Uh, and you know who the KAs are, right? No, not the KKK. No, the Kappa right. Alpha Order. That and it's not a fraternity. You ask any of these Southern boys, and they'll say it's not a freaking fraternity. It's an order. Uh, but the the, <laughs> Kappa, the Kappa Alpha Order was a fraternal organization which was founded by Robert E. Lee. I didn't know that. Yes, he is the founder. And uh, most Southern universities have a Kappa Alpha order. And they used to do Old South days where they would have parades and they would all dress up in, in Confederate uniforms and so <laughs> forth until all the, the colleges started being run by metrosexuals and they, they told them they couldn't right. do that anymore because it offended people. Uh <sighs> We, Do we have anything happy to talk about? Yeah, let's let's talk about the uh, the uh, Mini 14 and 300 Blackout. I'm really excited well, about that. I'm on the waiting okay, list. Okay, good, because I thought you were going to want to talk about the Glock 43, but okay, the Mini 14. So they took they took a gun that nobody has a use for and put it in the caliber that a few people have a use for. <laughs> the, only, the only state where people actually buy Mini 14s is California. Because it's a because cal- it doesn't have a protruding pistol grip, and so the only place they're going to sell that gun is in California. But in California, you can't have suppressors. You know the peasants. What does that? The, what does that have to do with anything? Well, the blackout. I mean, the yeah, no, but what does that? Have to do with anything? I mean, it, it, I mean, it, it said it made sense. Yeah, I'm saying it, it, the only place they're going to sell that gun is in California. They got ten round magazine. Mini Fort, the, it's the it's the gun of the slave. It's the slave gun. Can we call it a slave gun? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, I got a question for you. Do you believe that as long as the firearms industry keeps kowtowing to all these slave states like New York and Connecticut and Massachusetts and all, so forth, uh, that they will ever fix themselves? Oh, absolutely not. Like when I see the the pump action AR fifteen. You know, that's that's not a Samato, it's a pump gun It's mm-hmm. oh, yeah. made to take AR mags. I'm like, you're not helping. I'm filled you're with the not, urge to defecate. You're not helping. Yeah, because, all right, I, and I've, and I've, I've said, it's like, it's like uh, you think you're doing a good thing by giving your out-of-work bum bro- brother-in-law 20 bucks, but as long as you keep giving him 20 bucks, he's not going to fix himself. And as long as we keep listen, making special California listen, there's a, legal, there, there's a bunch of bunch of dudes up in Connecticut that stood in line to register their guns with their Mola Lale hats and T-shirts on. Oh yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. Oh yeah. So, so I mean, the, the, you can't you can't fix stupid. Now, now having said that, here's there's a bunch of freedom loving Connecticut gun owners that did not do that. So I'm not talking about everybody that lives in Connecticut. I'm just talking about the bootlickers that lined up to register their guns. And magazines, whatever. That, yeah, that's, and, that's but, what, and did they just Jared? Did we just not have a story? Oh, that that weird Perry Farrell looking metrosexual creature that they elected to their Senate in uh, in Connecticut. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a Rosa Delora or something. She wants to no. she wants to pay Pete, Connecticut citizens. She wants to bribe them. Uh, what, what was the bribe she was going to give them? A two thousand dollar tax $2, credit to, tax to surrender their rifles to the state. So maybe one, well, two. Oh hell, two all rifles. them people that got in line, they probably figured, well, I'm already, I'm already on a list. I might as well get the tax credit. <laughs> Oh, dude, that just makes economic sense. That's right. It's, it's only the reasonable thing to do. While we're on this, Listen, I don't get a, I don't get a lot of my philosophies off bumper stickers. <laughs> but I saw a bumper sticker that says, 
if it's time to bury your guns, it's actually time to dig them up. Exactly. Wow. All right. So we'll be here tomorrow. Oh, Zachary, please tell the audience uh, what the topic for the Student of the Gun University podcast is going to be tomorrow. Yes, indeed. The Thursday, September 8th. One second. Yep. Yes, the Thursday, September 8th edition of SOTGU podcast, Student of the Gun University, is going to be rifle scopes. Do you need more power or more skill? Because you can't buy skill. That's right. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Remember, you're a beginner once. You're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new, free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links and remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.